Hey guys, I'm back again with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about tuning your Tiny Whoop to get the best stick feel and the best tune you can possibly get out of it. So, the reason I made this video is when I recently updated a 3.11 of Betaflight, I got to thinking about, you know, how much more powerful um, a regular full size craft is uh, than a Tiny Whoop. And, you know, Beta Flight has slowly progressed over the years to deal with these really fast loot times and these really high uh, power to rate ratio quads. And the Tiny Whoop isn't that. It, it isn't that at all. Um, and I got to thinking, you know, there's probably a lot you could do with inside of Beta Flight with all these additional um, parameters that most people probably aren't touching or using. Uh, that would help quite a bit because some of these parameters, their default settings are made for really high power to rate ratio quads and uh, they're also made for noisy quads because majority of the uh, crafts coming out now, uh, majority of the props and motors for like 5 inch are much noisier uh, than what a tiny whoop is, is using and that's what the filters are set up for. So I got to digging into it and um, I got mine flying really really good now I used to think I had a really good tune on mine and I could do flips and rolls and I didn't have like any oscillation problems or any bounce back um, it, it flew great um, but one problem I've always felt is it just never felt as connected as my full-size crafts and I always assumed that that was mainly just because it's underpowered it doesn't have a whole lot of authority well I was wrong so I found some changes that could be made inside of Betaflight that will actually make the craft feel much more connected to the radio and that's what today's video is all about. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over into Betaflight and I'm going to go through the setup uh, that I have on there right now. Um, I'm going to go over the PIDs, I'm going to go over the filters and uh, talk a little bit about it. I'm going to try to keep this video short, I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes. Um, so we're going to hop into that and um, if you guys want to see an actual like full PID tutorial, let me know down in the comments because that's something I've been thinking of doing for a while now. So if you guys want to see that, uh, go ahead and let me know down there. But we're going to hop over into Betaflight and check it out. All right, guys, so we are in beta flight. We're going to go ahead and connect to our board. I'm going to try to go over this as quickly as possible. There's a lot to go over. I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes if I can. So first things first, don't use any of my settings unless you're running 3.1.1 firmware. Uh, I say this because different versions of firmware um, have different internal settings like settings that you can't see um, the scaling of things are different and my settings may be uh, they work good on 3.1.1 and they may work good for you on 3.1.1 but if you're in like 3.0 or 2.9 and you try to use these settings it may work absolutely horrible so if you're gonna copy my settings uh, at least make sure you're on 3.1.1 so let's hop on over into the configurations first um, I run brushed, obviously, uh, motor PWM, frequency you want that to be at 4000. I turn motor stop off because I like to do freestyle. I turn my motors up high enough to where they rotate um, at an okay speed um, when my throttle's all the way down. I run air mode and I turn my minimum cell voltage down to 3.2. Uh, to try to squeeze a little bit more flight time out of the craft for uh, because of the voltage sag. Um, I run 2K, 1K. Uh, the reason I run 2K, 1K is one, this is an F1 board. Uh, so 1K opens up a little bit of CPU usage. As you can see, I'm only at 4%. I also turn off the accelerometer, but you can run 2K, 1K with the accelerometer on in uh, uh, 3.11. Or at least I've been able to do it, um, but I turn it off just to open up more processing power. Um, the reason I run 2.1 is I want the gyro to see a problem, fix the problem, and then send it. Uh, like see, uh, Basically, it can see a problem. If the problem wasn't fixed perfectly the first time, the second time it sees it, it will fix it perfectly, and then it sends it out to your PID loop. If these are matching, then whatever your gyro sees, 
get sent to your PID loop immediately, and then it has to make the correction and then send the correction again. And in all honesty, 1K is probably faster, or for the most part, it is faster than what a tiny whoop can adjust for anyways. So really, you could run 1K, 1K, and I don't think it'll make much of a difference if you have properly tuned PIDs. But we're not going to go into that a whole lot. We're just going to move on over to PID tuning. So ignore this. It's flipping around like crazy because my radio is turned off. So um, I'm not going to go over PID tuning like super in-depth. Um, if you guys want to see a full PID tuning tutorial, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. And if there's enough interest, I'll definitely make one. Um, but to uh, make this video as quickly as possible, um, I'm just going to go over this quick. And that is I tune P, then I tune D, then I tune I. The reason why I do that is I tune P up high enough to where I get oscillations out of a flip or roll. So I get bounce back. Once I get bounce back out of a flip and roll and they're matching bounce back, I'm getting just as much bounce back out of each. So you want to tune your roll until you get a little bit of bounce back. Then you want to tune your pitch until you get the same amount of bounce back as you got with roll. You want, as soon as you see that little bit of bounce back, turn it down until there's the least amount of bounce back as possible, but you don't want to get completely rid of it. Once you've done that, you can move on over to D and do the same thing by turning D up until the bounce back goes away. Once the bounce back has gone away, you have D high enough. Then you can move to I and you can start tuning your I. And I tune that by doing air blurps, throttle blurps at an angle, whether it's a pitch angle or a roll angle, I put it in that angle, I leave it there and I do throttle blurps. And if it starts to twist and tweak out of the angle that I set it at, then I's too low and you need to crank your I up. Um, other than that, I increase I for y'all a little bit to help deal with scrubbing into a wall or tapping into something. It'll keep you from uh, like spinning way out, like spinning around a bunch of times. It'll try to stop it sooner or keep it from even spinning in the first place. So that is what I do for my uh, PIDs. Um, don't be afraid to crank these up a lot higher than you're used to because the without like active braking um, and a ton of power, you can't speed your props up and down really quickly. You can't control them like you can a full-size quad nearly as fast. Yes, it's smaller and there's not as much weight there, but you still can't speed them up and slow them down as quickly and that's what you're really tuning for. So because it's not a very powerful quad and these settings are made for much more powerful quads, you can raise P up a lot more than you're used to and because of the slow speed that the props spin up and slow down you're gonna need more D than you than you're used to using and because there's not a whole lot of authority uh, in the motors like P you're gonna need a little bit more I as well than what you would normally be used to so that is that I'm not gonna go too much more in depth on it um, like I said if you want to see a little bit more on PID tuning then uh, I'll do a video on it, but that's pretty much the basics. Now we're going to go into filter settings, which is why I made this whole video in the first place. And that is because these filters were introduced for the most part because our quads have gotten noisier and more powerful. The Tiny Whoop has not gotten mo uh, noisier or more powerful than anything we were running in back in clean flight days. And these filters are set way too aggressively for a Tiny Whoop, which is making it uh, fly even more dulled down than it sh than it needs to be. Um, without getting into too much detail, turning your your gyro soft low pass filter up to 188 is basically turning it off. Um, it would be pretty much the equivalency of turning. Uh, if you're familiar with Kiss, it'd pretty much be equivalent to like turning your filter to off. Um, I just turn, once I have my PID set and I know it flies good and I'm not having any oscillation problems, I then go and turn this up to 188. And if any weird harmonics get introduced at that point, then I will slowly decrease it, but I've never had that happen. And I just leave it at 188. So that is one thing you can do 
that will make it fly much better. The reason why is anytime you add a filter of any kind, you introduce a delay. That delay makes it feel more disconnected from your sticks. You can still have a quad that locks into position um, and you know, stops out of a flip and roll really quickly and fast without any oscillations, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have a tightly tuned setup that is going to instantly rotate or flip or roll as soon as you command it to on the sticks. And doing this, turning this filter up, which essentially turns it off after you get past 188, by increasing that, um, which is less filtering. The higher this number goes, the less filtering you have. By doing that, you're removing more delay from your pid loop, which makes it have a tighter feel. Now we'll move on down to D-term low pass frequency. And the D-term low pass is a, uh, it's designed to get rid of any harmonics that get created on the derogative um, pid um, control. So basically, if there's too much P and then you turn D up to compensate for that P, you can make it to where D will start combating P and P starts com uh, fighting against D, uh, D. And if that happens, you get an oscillation in your PID loop that's not because of your gyro, it's because of D fighting P and vice versa. So they introduced, and that's mainly uh, was a big problem back in uh, 2.9 days when we started getting these faster loop times you would get de oscillations so fast that you couldn't hear or see them but they would create a bunch of heat in your motors so this can be turned up quite a bit once you have uh, your pids tuned properly and D set good um, and it's not a real crazy number it's not higher than I wouldn't go much higher than like 28 if you have to go higher than 28 you might want to just turn down your P a little bit but once you get to that, you can start cranking up this D-term low pass frequency by 10 hertz at a time um, until you uh, come down and feel that your motors are getting warmer than usual. If your motors feel like they're getting warmer than they were previously, then I would turn it down by 10 points. So go up 10 points at a time until you feel your motors get a little warm. And if they're getting warmer than normal, because they're still going to get warm, obviously, but if they're getting warmer than what feels normal, then I would recommend turning the low pass filter for D-term down a little bit, uh, which increases its filtering. But again, the higher this is, the less filtering, the better stick feel you will have. And I'm not even gonna get into notch filters because there's really no reason to use a notch filter on a tiny whoop, so you might as well leave them off because we don't want any extra filtering. So other than that, the only other thing I would say that you could do is uh, watch my other video on reversing the motor direction when running Betaflight. Um, without getting too in depth in that, if you're running a, a stock inductrix frame, the motor struts are angled the wrong direction for the direction that Betaflight spins the motors. It's what and um, what that does is now when you run beta flight with the beta flight rotation on your motors, you're actually having your motors work against those strut mounts, and it makes the air dirtier. It introduces unwanted prop wash. It takes away from yaw authority. So I would definitely look into that. I will put a link to that up here in the corner. Um, it's really easy to do, uh, so I would go ahead and watch that video as well. And other than that, these are all the things you can do to increase the uh, stability and make your sticks feel a lot more uh, locked uh, to your craft. Um, and just all in all make the tiny whoop fly better. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please like and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video.